Now I call uh, Christa Lindström. I wouldn't dare to say that this kind of meetings, the fifth in a row and others, had uh, taken place without the entrepreneurship of Christa Lindström. Thank uh, you, sir. I, I know many entrepreneurs. Uh, some are a bit uh, going in the direction of the tangent out of the globe or something. But uh, <laughs> uh, Christel uh, combines uh, on his entrepreneurship with a kind of realism, I think, uh, that is uh, very, very, very mature. Uh, I, don't want, I don't need to, <laughs> to say any more. Christel Lindstrom. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so I will, um, today I will talk about um, a technology of how to spread ideas and how not only to spread ideas, but also how to make them tangible. Because a major issue as soon as you do innovation is to making the people who you work with understand what you're trying to tell them. And, and I, I encountered this firsthand talking to my children when they asked me, Daddy, what is it really that you're doing? And I already explained to them three or four times <laughs> what I was doing. and, and um, I realized I need to do something more. I, I, I need I need to, to uh, uh, communicate in a way they could understand, and, and that that talk to them in and in, in their universe and, and and the way they were thinking. So how were they thinking? Well, they play games on computers, and my background is actually in programming. That that's my that's my training. So. Um, I thought, how can I, how can I make them understand? So the, I, the idea of doing something that could, could communicate with them was born. And this was about five years ago, and I didn't really do anything about it. I, 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 uh, I thought about it, I discussed it with a few people, and eventually, uh, together with my business partner in California, Mr. Ron Svensson, um, uh, we discussed this a bit further, and uh, we decided together with a very, uh, um, very uh, important person in the world when it comes to real, uh, virtual reality and making computer using for social networking and also for, for decision making. Her name is Crystal Lopez. She's a Portuguese woman, but actually she's naturalized American and lives in South of, uh, South, Southern California and Irvine, University of Irvine. She's a professor there. Uh, we discussed this further, and I realized that there might be a possibility. So um, we made a couple of, of uh, tries in 2007, early 2008, and I showed them to, to a man who you just uh, heard speaking here, Mr. Kaliwan Ekstrom from the city of Uppsala, and we decided this could actually be something. So we started a project of doing a virtual model of Uppsala. And this work has continued and it's now propagating to other cities and other things are happening. I'll go into that later when you uh, do the questions, but I will focus now what's happened <coughs> from, from late 2000, from mid-2008 until today and what's going to happen in the next um, uh, six to 12 months. So, let's go back here. Um, first slide. So, we formed a company called Incitra, and, and so what is Incitra? It, it is about to share a vision. So how, how do we share a vision? Just like I, I did when I, when I talked to my, my children. Uh, and we applied it to a real project, and that's the Uppsala project, and how to implement the PRT system in the city of Uppsala. Um, so, so what is the basic idea? It is to utilize and, and f facilitate communication on how to do sustainable plans and real estate development among all stakeholders. Um, and how do you do that? Well, you provide an easy, accessible virtual model of a city that's interactive, dynamic, immersive, persistent, and evolvable. And I'll repeat that. Uh, what does that mean? That means that anyone can access it through internet. It's, it's dynamic, that means just as a city is dynamic, it, it's not fixed, it's, you know, you build a city and that, there it is, of course it changes, it changes transportation uh, patterns, it changes uh, seasons and it changes lights, many things change, of course, new buildings, new developments and things are knocked down. 
Um, so you need a d dynamic model as, as dynamic as the city is. It has to be immersive. You have to be able to immerse yourself, put yourself. So you need a model with some kind of avatar, something that you can actually put yourself into the city. And of course, it has to be persistent because uh, if the model is not persistent, that means that you will only, this is a major problem in this world I'm in now with, with doing virtual models is that almost, I would say 99% of the models that you're seeing on the internet of new developments in the city, they're not persistent. They make the model and then they throw it away. And, and that is actually a problem with products such as, I think many of you know these mapping programs like Google Earth and things like that. And if you check them closely, many of them are very old photos, five, six year old, some of them. And it doesn't really reflect reality because you have to fly a plane or you have to go with a satellite and take pictures pretty often. And for us, it's important that as it needs to be dynamic, reflects your change. It also has to be persistent so, so you can see as it is as close as, as possible. So any change in the city, you need it to have it there. And of course, evolvable. The model and technology itself should not be uh, in, have any constraints. You can actually have some kind of technology that, that can evolve and, and do bigger cities, bigger simulation, better quality, etc. And this is always an issue in the, in the software industry, as you well know. So, what, what does the project involve? It's, it's four real estate areas, it's a transit center, it's a university hospital in Uppsala, it's a biomedical university and a science park. There's a few other um, parts also. And the project includes generic transportation patterns, like in cars, buses, etc. Uh, the actual scheduling of those buses we try to put in. And the Uppsala podcast system using the solar energy on top, so we want to model that too. Um, so the first model was developed in 2008-2009, visualizing and simulating a train arriving from Stockholm to Uppsala Travel Center. I'm going to show you a video of that uh, soon. Uh, then there was a possible development of a new station at the football arena and the adjacent hospital development that we started in 2011. And this summer it was decided by the real estate companies to extend the model to the, the entire system. So all stakeholders, we do with the entire system, and that work just started. So you will see the little pieces of it. It's not done yet, but you can see how it looks like. Um, and that is supposed to include all existing new developments, all existing transit people movements by foot, by bike, uh, the solar simulation of energy. So we'll have sun going from morning to, to evening and even nights. So you can see the stars and, and the different lighting in the city. And, uh, um, uh, so we hope to have this ready, at least the first version of it, in, in early 2012. Uh, most of the work is done in California, but some is done also here as well. So, what is this? Well, you want to go from, that's the real life, to the left, and that's a copy. So, from here to there, that's where you want to go. And so how do you turn a vision into reality? And this is just some pictures we're taking from the model. And this is what we did in 2009. And it's actually about the train arriving. So I'm going to show you a short movie, the earlier version. So I'll have to talk to it also. It's running. There. Okay, can you see? Yeah. So what this is, you see, uh, there's somebody walking there, uh, there's a wind uh, simulation, you have a lot of bikes uh, to the right to see if here a car coming, that was a car passing, uh, the intersections have read red lights, green lights, so if the red light, the car will actually stop. If you go in front of a car and if it's a, you're going against the green light, thank you Tom, if you're going against the green light, there's a green light there. Uh, the car will actually stop and not running over, hopefully at least. Uh, so you're walking with another car. Um, here is the new development uh, of, of the transit center. This is the old train station. This is the Congress Center in Uppsala. And now we have a green light so we can walk. So um, I have some internet issues. It might be a little bit um, There's a taxi coming in. We we'll actually have sound, so, so if you move closer to a tree, you can put birds in the trees, so you will actually hear the birds. 
and there's also a Doppler effect, so if something goes by, it will have a higher pitch as it comes near you, and it will have a lower pitch as it passes you. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any possibility. Maybe there is sound here. So let's see, let's see if that works. Yes? Yeah. It's actually the train you're hearing right now. In this model, so the closer we get to the train, you'll actually hear the train. It's in the city. We actually use the German model. So this, this is the German in the city train. And as it moves, you get closer. And this is the technology we had um, a few years ago, and it has developed since. Um, I realize I need to put in better power. So. so I will not go much more into that right now. There's another train coming, I think, there. Yes, it is. And people will go out, but I, I won't go into that. I'm actually going to go into the live model now of the next area. Because you can actually make photos. Oops, I need to log out. I have to log in again. Um, you can, of course, make pictures, as I showed from the beginning. You can make a movie. But what's really exciting is actually to be live in the model. And you're not live just yourself. You can have up to 500 people live in the same time. So you can have an entire school class, and all of us could have each and one, one computer. We could go into here and interact with each other. So, so it, it is a very powerful technology if you can do that. Don't tell me I've been logged out of it. Internet also. Wait a second. I'm going to see if I'm oh yes, I am. This waterfront threw me out. Thank you very much. So there. Hopefully, I will be logging up. Try again. So by having that possibility to have many people logged in, you can actually experience the chip and, and, and do this work yourself, um, either as a single person or you can do it in group. And, and this has shown to be very powerful in the process of communicating with the real estate, with the politicians, with, with uh, all the staff that is involved in this process. There, so, so. Now, the, I started the model from scratch, it will be built. And this is actually not um, the, the train station, this is the hospital area. And I intentionally started it from scratch, you see how it's being built, piece by piece. And this is about one square, square kilometer of the model. Now, I'm the only person logged in, so you will only see me right now here. Let's go into one of the areas. So here you have example. The new um, arena being built. Here you have a couple of the hospitals, hospital buildings. You see some of the track being built. And this is Fyrison of Uppsala, the, the little river in Uppsala. And even if it's being built, I'm still able to navigate. And this is me actually. That's where I am right now. And where nothing is really moving. Now, what's interesting with this? and the power of this technology you see in, in, in communication. For example, uh, we wanted to explain for the hospital and the people working at, at the hospital that we could actually have the PRT system being used for dual purposes. Not only could it be a feeder of people working and patients and visitors to come and go from the hospital, it could also be served as a system for staff. They have a major issue below the hospital. Um, how do you say that in English? Somewhere. It, it, it's it's an underground system of uh, corridors and, and, and passages where you put all the tunnels. Tunnels, yeah, Maybe. yeah, tunnels or whatever. So so where you put all the uh, clothes to be washed, um, uh, new supplies, and staff use them, and that's actually legal. They're not supposed to mix those things in the same because of problems with health and, and, and contagious stuff. And utility doors. Utility corridors. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. So, now we wanted to visualize and talk about the possibility of having the PR system, having a couple of stations around the hospital, and so the staff could use the PRT vehicles for their transportation. 
So we actually put up, and this is still in, in progress, so this is not done, but what this is, this is actually, this is the logo for the hospital. So this is a car just going for the hospital. However, at the separate entrance, and this is the, the other entrance for, for the patients and, and visitors. So you have a double entrance. One for, for, for the staff using this vehicle, and another vehicle here for, for the rest of the people. And this one is only actually going around the hospital. So it's using the same infrastructure, it never goes out of, of, of the system. And this is also because having by having a separate entrance, uh, you just show your badge or whatever, and they go, and you just push a button. So it cannot be used by anyone else than, than or operated, should I say, by anyone else than actually the staff. And this is something, you know, to, to say it is one thing, but to, to be able to show it makes it much easier for people to understand what you're talking about. And of course, there's the many, many different kinds of issues regarding visualization. This is not the actual stadium. It doesn't look like this. It's called Dentonas, uh, the student stadium. Uh, this is a vision how you can develop it. And the reason we did it like this is that over here, where you see these buildings, is actually a parking. And the main problem for, for the hospital to be developed is that they have no space. The only space they have left is parking. So the ideal situation for them would be get rid of parking so they can put new buildings into, into the existing lot and so they don't have to spread out the hospital and sprawl the hospital itself. Now, how do we replace that parking? Well, we do have a, um, an area here where you have a football stadium. So we discussed why not just elevate the entire football stadium by about um, uh, 10, 12 feet or 2.8, 3 meters, elevate the entire football stadium, turn it around because they have noise problems. This is actually the standing here, but we put it there and there instead, so it would act as a barrier for sound. Put the parking under here, and so they could actually <coughs> develop the parking areas here. And this sounds like something that's a simple thing, and, and, and it's it has, okay, you just swap things, but it has much more profound effect. It increases the value of land enormously. Um, and you actually utilize things and you can, you can also lower the cost of implementation of the PRT system. Now, how do you communicate this without this model? Of course you can, but it simplifies everybody. You immediately understand what I'm talking about just by seeing, me explaining, and by seeing. So the power of doing that is much stronger than just explaining it with a few pictures. And I can go to any place in the model and just put myself where I need to be. Okay, so next thing to do is actually to animate the model. <coughs> so we put a little button here. So I say, I now I want to see how does a PRT system operate here? How would that look if I am standing inside the station? So I go in here somewhere and see what happens. So, okay, this is the way it will look. And if I've done this right, we should have little vehicles coming over from there soon. Hopefully. There. I have to push the button again, sorry. So, no, it's coming there. Okay. Take some time. So this is, a a possible station uh, very close to the train station. The train station is over there. And here you see a few vehicles coming, passing over the river, going a little higher because you need to be able to pass a ship underneath. It has to be 11 meters. Slows down a little, going into the stadium. And this one just passes, it doesn't stop. Now this is the development we're doing, so I don't really have much more to show than this right now. Uh, the, the, the actual area will be expanded for the full four kilometer area. And with having all the buses, you saw a couple of vehicles in the movie. Uh, we will have people, we will have bikes, we will have uh, cars, etc. And of course, just in this one, we can actually simulate what time of day. So how does it look at sunset, for example? So you can simulate the solar panels on top. And you can have the entire model going live. 
And what's the really nice thing I think about this is that now you can, when you've done this, you can share it. So let me go into that. Chris, you can, you can go into a pot now. I can do that also, yes. It takes a little time, so, so I, I, I have limited time. I go into that. Yeah. Mm. You can experience the chip, yeah, very important. So I just let this run in the background, go back to my presentation. Uh, so, um, so what is this about, to, to repeat, what would we do? It's about the vision that green development in urban areas is everyone's business. And as many as possible should have access to that change process. However, how do you do that? It, it, this could be very expensive, so we're trying to find a model how to develop this in, in a sustainable way. So what we do, we focus on using students and real estate or city stakeholders to make this as, po as cost effective as pos possible, basic model for all. You can of course extend the model, you can model not only the, the, the outside of the house, you can model the inside of the house, you can take AutoCAD or SketchUp models, etc. and put it there so you can actually go inside the buildings, but that's the next part of it. The in, this is really important. The initial process is closed because I do not believe in, in, in having a, some kind of democracy in the development process. You, you have to have that with each stakeholders have to have their say first. So we do not open the, the, the modeling in, 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 in early stage. That's a very closed process. But when you're done, that's when you share. That's when you share. You say, okay, this is something we can take responsibility for, or many, many stakeholders take responsibility for each or their part. And now we're able to communicate it because you need to understand it yourself. So you, first you do it in a closed environment with the people involved at the very you know, your nearest, and then you <coughs> share it to the internet. Um, the technology is disseminated and propagated through science centers, universities, uh, NGOs, stakeholders in the cities, such as biking, clubs, etc. Uh, because they are quite important and have an impact or somebody in, responsible for the landscaping. Now, very important, the technology this is free. You don't, you don't pay for, for using it. So all the citizens, everybody, they just log in. It's a bit like YouTube. You just go into a special URL and, and log in and you can start using the system. They cannot change. So for changing it, uh, those stakeholders have to pay a little fee for hosting the servers and for making the basic model. But since we're using students and using university in collaboration, the cost is very low. So we've been able to go from about um, uh, 15,000 euros up to 20,000 square kilometer down to about four or 5,000 euros a square kilometer right now. So it's a very low cost for doing this. Um, we plan to release this technology in the near future. I cannot give you a release date. I wish I could. <laughs> We're still in negotiations. Uh, but um, it will be available, I hope, at least somewhere 2012. Um, thank you. That's it.